So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tanmay Bakshi and today we're going to be going over, well, the start of a new series called Learn AI or rather Deep Learning from Scratch. Now this is a series I'm very excited about. I'm going to be taking you from the very beginning of learning the world of deep learning and showing you iteratively some more and more advanced concepts all the way from the simple perceptron and how gradient descent works all the way to more advanced concepts like multi-layer perceptrons, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, and so much more. This is a really interesting series. Now before we get started, one thing that I do want to say is that if you do enjoy content like this and you want to see more of it, then please do make sure to subscribe to the channel as that really does help out a lot. And to stay notified whenever I release new content, including new tutorials in this series, make sure you turn on notifications by hitting the bell. That way you actually get a notification when I do release a new video. Apart from that, if you want to be notified when I'm releasing new kinds of content across platforms, then do follow me on Instagram as well. We're specifically going to be using Python to implement our code in the beginning, uh, although that will evolve in the future. And we're going to be using a couple of different frameworks, all the way from, you know, simpler ones like NumPy for simple calculations, as well as PyTorch and TensorFlow for GPU accelerated computation. We'll be covering all of that in the next few episodes. But what I want to do today is quickly cover a couple of things to sort of introduce you to the series and get across the point of, well, why this series in the first place? Why would you want to learn artificial intelligence technology? And why is the series named the way it is? Because, well, we're covering deep learning technology, but why is AI in the title? Well, you see, artificial intelligence technology isn't just a single technology. Artificial intelligence technology is more like an umbrella term, right? It covers a bunch of different technologies from many decades of computing. Now, traditionally, artificial intelligence, as the name su suggests, covers technologies that we thought required human intelligence or tasks that we thought required human intelligence to, to implement or to do. But now, with the power of artificial intelligence, we can do them with technology. So take, for example, chess. Up until a couple of decades ago, chess was something that we thought required intrinsically some kind of human knowledge and reasoning ability. But then eventually IBM came out with Deep Blue and we recognized that, well, maybe we don't need as much reasoning as we thought as we thought we did. And because of that, we were able to use simple mathematical algorithms to determine, you know, mathematically what the best next possible move is. And then we have today even more advanced versions of this technology with DeepMind's Alpha Zero, but we'll be getting to that in a moment. Now, what IBM did with Deep Blue to play chess wasn't intelligent in any way. It wasn't reminiscent of the way humans play chess in the slightest. However, we called it AI because we thought that playing chess required human intelligence, even though, of course, we now know it doesn't. And since then, there have been quite a few different tasks that we as humans perceive as intelligent and therefore call artificial intelligence technology. Good example, self-driving cars. Even your Apple Watch. Now, the Apple Watch Series 4 and above has this feature called fall detection. And what that does is if you were to take a hard fall, it'll automatically detect that using machine learning or AI algorithms on the watch. But here's the thing. You're never going to hear this technology marketed as AI or artificial intelligence. No one's ever going to refer to that technology as artificial intelligence. But if you were to take very, very similar logic, pretty much the same algorithms, and replicate that to do, say, a language model like OpenAI's GPT-2 that can write really realistic text, suddenly people start to call pretty much the same technology artificial intelligence. Why is that? It's the same logic, it's the same fundamental assumptions that we're making, the same fundamental math as well. So why is it that all of a sudden we go from calling fall detection on the Apple Watch from machine learning to artificial intelligence when we're generating natural language? It's because, well, while artificial intelligence has a few formal definitions, the way we all colloquially use the term artificial intelligence is just, oh, if it looks intelligent and if it's happening because of technology and not from a human mind, we happen to call it AI. Now, I personally do not like the way we call this technology AI because it's reminiscent of human intelligence, even though there is none. The emergent sort of functionality of the technology may end up looking like it's intelligent, but at the end of the day, there's no real intelligence going on. If you hold a conversation with OpenAI's GPT, it's not because GPT can feel anything or is thinking or is even reasoning in the slightest. There's very, very little common sense reasoning actually happening, even in OpenAI's GPT-3. But what is happening is it's learning, well, 
When I saw a bunch of internet data, when this text came up before, it was usually followed up by this kind of text, so I should probably respond to this kind of text. And even now, I've sort of humanized the neural network in a way by saying things like, the neural network thinks it should copy this over here. But really, that's just a limitation of human language. I don't mean to do that, there's definitely better ways I could phrase it. But in order for you to understand, that's the best way that I can get the message across. So we need to stop humanizing artificial intelligence. It's not intelligent in any way. It's really just mathematical you know, function optimization, which we're going to be getting into uh, in just a little bit. But again, that's why this series is learning deep learning from scratch, not AI, because I'm going to be covering that sort of next frontier of the AI technology, which is deep learning. So if we were to take a look at sort of formally where the technology that I'm going to be showing you is, is sort of under that umbrella term, we've got artificial intelligence, um, not the colloquial usage of the term, but rather the formal usage of the term, you know, tasks that we uh, thought required human intelligence, but now we know don't, you know, we can use technology for them. Uh, and then under that, you've got machine learning, which is a lot of different you know, kinds of algorithms that use some sort of mathematical optimization to be able to take data and learn from it. And under that, you've got deep learning, which is that new frontier of algorithms that are meant to unlock insight and sort of understand the kinds of data that regular sort of more primitive machine learning algorithms don't have the potential to uh, to understand. Now, why exactly they don't have the potential and what enables deep learning to do so, that we're going to be covering in a moment, or in the next episode, rather. However, what I would like to do quickly is just let you know that all in all, deep learning technology is actually really really simple. Like, when you take a look at what it does, you would think it's way more complex than it really is. But deep learning technology at its very base is actually really simple. It's basically this. You have two data sets. You have X and you have Y. Now you know that there's some sort of like causal link between X and Y. So if you're given some sample within X, you can predict Y. You know what Y should be. But you don't know how to write a mathematical function to convert X to Y. So, of course, since computers only understand math, that means you can't program a computer to do the X to Y translation. So, good example, let's just say you take a picture of a cat or a dog, and you want to write some sort of rules to determine whether it's a cat or a dog. How are you going to do it? Well, take a second to think about it, and you'll realize that you can't, or at least no human so far has been able to figure it out. And that's because, at the end of the day, we are trying to write a mathematical function for something that is chaotic and complex, image data. And so, the entire point of deep learning is actually quite simple. It is, if we can't write that function, maybe the computers can do it for us using sort of meta-math, taking a look at functions and trying to optimize those functions automatically. Now, I know it sounds magical still, but just all you need to keep in mind is that you've got X and Y, you somehow want to translate X to Y, you cannot yourself write the function that does the X to Y translation, so you want to use a computer to automatically calculate what the function should be, such that when you call it, it can calculate what the output Y should be for some input X. So, you can feed it a new image, like a cat or a dog, that, that would be your X, and your Y would be a label. Is this a cat? Or is this a dog? And if the computer can figure that out for you, suddenly you have this whole new world of data analysis unlocked that can help you in untold numbers of ways. Quick example that I want to share with you here is Siri. Now, I'm not going to say the wake word for Siri because otherwise everything's going to uh, buzz right now and yours probably will too. Um, but one thing that I will say is that if you were to take a look at a way like a personal assistant, if you were to take a look at the way personal assistants like Siri work, at, uh, within their core, there's a very structured logic flow that they follow. The first thing they've got to do is recognize your voice. The way they do that is by taking the raw audio input stream and translating that to words and characters. So in this case, the voice is the X and the words are the Y. It's outputting words. Then once you have words, we use another machine learning algorithm, a completely separate isolated system to look at those words and try and understand 
meaning. That in itself is an x to y mapping problem. Can we take words and translate to meaning? No human can write a mathematical function for that. Language is too complex, but we can use deep learning to figure it out for us. Then at that point, it's a pretty simple structured algorithm where Apple engineers are going there and being like, all right, if someone says a sentence with this meaning, then we want to do this thing, like set an alarm clock if they asked us to set an alarm for tomorrow at 9 a.m. And then they manually type out a response, the engineers in the back end of the Siri system, which is then treated as an X for a deep learning system that translates it to Y, another audio stream that it says back to you. All of that happens immediately. To you, it looks like a single coherent package, but all of it is powered by individual isolated machine learning systems doing their very own X to Y translations that previously simply weren't possible. So I know that I use the words machine learning and deep learning almost interchangeably there. But what I mean by that is that machine learning, again, is that broader umbrella that contains deep learning technologies, one of, it, one of its arms. And we're going to be specifically focusing on deep learning in this tutorial series. And so now that you have a bit of a primer as to what this technology is and sort of what goes behind it, Let's go ahead and take a look in the next episode at some of the very, very simple foundational building blocks of this technology and how they're trained from a mathematical perspective, specifically the perceptron. So let's go ahead and take a look.